Hi, this is David Voss, CCIE 11372, and in this video we will be covering BPTU. And in this video we're going over some basics of spanning tree. And if we're talking about the basics of spanning tree, you need to talk about bridge protocol data units and also port states. So that's the goal of this video. We'll talk about BPDUs, port states, and then finally we will discuss the importance or just an understanding what the bridge ID is and how it's important to spanning tree protocol. STP is defined in the IEEE 802.1D standard and its primary purpose is to make sure that your network is loop free. It operates by making the following assumptions that all links are bi-directional and that they can in fact send and receive BPDUs and that the switch itself is able to regularly receive process and send BPDUs. Now, all switches that reside in the same STP domain regularly, regularly exchange these bridge protocol data units, these messages with one another. And ultimately, the, net the network uses the information from these data units to determine the network topology and the flows of traffic. The topology of an active switch network is determined by the following three variables. The unique MAC address or the switch identifier associated with each switch, the path cost to the root bridge associated with each port on the switch, and the port identifier. All of these play a big role in the decision making of how traffic will flow on a network. Some basic facts, uh, BPDUs are sent to the STP multicast destination address as you see here. And by default, they are sent every two seconds. Now, there are two type of data units that we should know of. Configuration BPDUs and TCNs, or Topology Change Notification BPDUs. Now, switches determine the best configuration BPDU based on the following criteria, which is lowest root bridge ID, which is based on root bridge ID, root path cost to the root bridge, sender bridge ID and sender port ID. Before we can continue, we should really understand how things work in spanning tree regarding just the ports themselves. So spanning tree ports. So in a typical environment, we're going to have one root switch and we have three switches connected here, switch one, two, and three. And switch one is the root. And this is going to help us understand how spanning tree designates ports. So in spanning tree, the root never has root ports because root is always the forwarding port that is closest to the root bridge. So this root only has designated ports. Switch two and switch three both have root ports. That is the forwarding port that is closest to the root bridge in terms of path cost. And then switch three has a designated port. This is one forwarding port on each LAN segment. And then switch two is the alternate port. This is the best alternate path to the root bridge on that very same segment. Next to switch three, we're gonna connect switch four. Switch three is going to have a designated port, but it's going to also here have a backup port. A backup port is a backup redundant path to a segment where another bridge port already connects. Uh, the backup port applies only when a single switch has two links to the same segment. Now we can better understand the following slide. At the completion of configuration BPDU exchange, the following results. A root switch is elected for the entire spanning tree domain and a root port is elected on every non-root switch in the spanning tree domain. As you will remember, a root port is a forwarding port that is the closest to the root bridge in terms of path cost. A designated switch is elected for every LAN segment, and a designated port is elected on the designated switch for every segment. And if, we, and if you will remember, a designated port is a forwarding port for every LAN segment, the chosen forwarding port. And then finally, based on all of this information and all these calculations, loops are avoided in the network.
A top, topology change BPDUs play a key role in handling changes in the active topology. They are proactively originated by any switch and sent upstream toward the root bridge, providing information that would be key to keeping the network loop free. Let's ne next, let's talk about spanning tree port states. 802.1D has five different port states, disabled, blocking, listening, learning, and forwarding. Let's talk about each of these in depth. When a, when a switch port is in blocking mode, the port is not transmitting or receiving data, and it's prevented from transmitting BPDUs. Packets arriving on the port are not learned by the bridge's filtering database. A block port, though, can receive BPDUs and is included in the spanning tree algorithm calculation. So ultimately, it could be used to transfer data, but it's not. It's blocking at this point. Next, let's talk about the port state of listening. A listening port is not transmitting or receiving data, and packets on the port are not learned by the Bridges filtering database. But it can transmit and receive BBDUs and is included in the spanning tree algorithm calculation. The listening state is a transitional state that will change to the learning state after a settable time of period, which we know as the forward delay timer. Next, let's talk about the learning state. In a learning state, the port is not transmitting or receiving data, but it can receive and transmit BPDUs. It is included in the spanning tree algorithm calculation, and the packets arriving on the port are in fact learned by the bridges filtering database. This also is a transitional state that will automatically change to a forwarding state after a settable period of time, which is called the forward delay timer. And as appropriate, let's move on to the forwarding state. The forwarding state is the only state in which data is being transmitted and received by the port. It can receive and transmit BPDUs and is included in the spanning tree algorithm calculation. The packets arriving on the port are learned by the bridges filtering database. Finally, let's talk about the disabled port state. A port is disabled or in a disabled state when the port is not transmitting or receiving data packets or BPDUs and is not considered in the spanning tree algorithm. So as you can see, once a port is enabled by a network administrator or through initialization, it goes through a process or these different port states. The port will move into a listening and learning and ultimately a forwarding state if the spanning tree algorithm has chosen it as a root port or a designated port. If spanning tree has not chosen the port as a root or designated port, it will put the port into a blocking state. You know that also as an alternate port or a backup port. Now, Spanning Tree uses the bridge ID to uniquely identify each switch, and it's actually used to assist in the election of a Spanning Tree root bridge, unless, of course, the root bridge has been manually configured. In the 802.1D standard, each VLAN requires a unique bridge ID. So let's take a look at some of these basics with regards to Spanning Tree. Here we are on a switch. And what we'll do is let's just let's just do a basic show spanning tree. Here you can tell that this switch is in fact the root. There are many ways you can tell which is the root, but the most obvious way is that it says this bridge is the root. The second way you can tell that it's the root bridge is that you notice that the root ID MAC address and the bridge ID MAC address are both the same. Another way you can tell that it is in fact the root bridge 
is that none of the interfaces for VLAN 1 uh, are set up as a root port. The role is all designated ports, which you will normally find on the root bridge. Now you'll see here on VLAN 20 that VLAN 20 is not in fact root, and I knew that initially not by looking uh, at, at the root ID or bridge ID, but actually at the interfaces. I can see on Fast Ethernet 07 that it is a root. Now you can see here the status of the interfaces are forward, blocking, forwarding, uh, which obviously you know from what we've gone over already that root ports and designated ports are in forwarding state, alternate ports and backup ports are in a blocking state. Now let's take a look at a transition of an interface as it goes through the process um, through each of these port states. And what we're going to do is we're just going to check on VLAN 1. So let's take a look at Fast Ethernet 07 and watch it transition. Let's go ahead and shut it down. And now you can see Fast Ethernet 07 has gone down. And now you can now you can see that Fast Ethernet is no so now you can see that Fast Ethernet 07 is no longer showing up. But watch, because we know that there are set timers with 802.1D, we're going to be able to see it transition as the port comes up and spanning tree calculates. We'll see it transition and going through the certain steps, ultimately getting to its role as a designated port on the root switch. So watch this. And what we'll do here, it's not up yet. There it is. It's listening. And we should be able to see it go through it th three stages here. Now it's learning. And now it's forwarding. So we saw it go from a listening, it went from a disabled state to a listening, learning, and forwarding state. So here's what you've learned. You've learned the basics of spanning tree protocol 802.1D. You've learned the importance of bridge protocol data units. You also better understand port states and the importance as well that bridge ID plays in the entire process of spanning tree protocol. All these things together build for you a really solid foundation as you move forward and learning about spanning tree and different variations of it. Good luck in your studies.